Welcome to another video on SAP Analytics Cloud as part of the quick start. So we're going to build our first story based on the model that we created previously. So here we are, we're going to say create a story and we're going to choose for this example a canvas page and then we're going to select the chart. So as part of that, we then move in our repository to where we saved the model. We select the model and we will be presented with an empty chart. So first step, we're going to quickly resize the area for the chart. And on the right hand side, we can see now two different panels. First, the builder panel where we configure all the data related items. And then we also have a styling panel or a formatting panel where we have all the things related to colors and fonts and number formatting. So we start by choosing the chart type, in our case, bar and column. We select the measures and we can see we can also create calculations here or for example, an input that allows us to choose which measure we would like. For our example, we choose revenue and we're going to choose the dimension, in this case, product. So here we have our first simple chart. We can see the product names, we can see the values, but let's do some quick configurations for the chart. So we open up the menu and first thing is we're going to sort the chart so that the highest values are on the top. So then we're also going to add a ranking and we focus on the top five products for our example. So now we want to do some formatting. First of all, we want to choose if we want to see the ID or the description of our product. Right now we see the description and it shows where you can actually make these changes. We also want to do some number formatting. So we scroll down in the starting panel to the number format. You can see there's a millions. So we're simply basically going to use the scale million and we're going to choose the short abbreviation. So M for millions and we're going to add one decimal places for that. As a next step, we're going to add a table. I will see kind of like some of the basic steps how to configure the table. The first item we notice is that the table will show with a default measure already shown in the column, but we can start making the necessary changes. So first of all, we're going to add our customer into the rows for the table. And then we're going to choose if we want to see the ID or description in the same way as we can able do that for the chart, we can do this here for the table. In addition, you can see all the measures have been organized in a dimension called account. In our example, we filter the list of measures down to the revenue, the labor cost and the cost of goods. So we can see all the elements as part of the table. And one of the things I like to do is to go to the formatting and actually use one of the templates. In our case, I select the report styling template. It gives it a nice formatting and highlights the items. So on top, we do the same thing. We're actually going to apply to all the measures the scale of millions so that we have a consistent look and feel between the chart and the table as well. And here we have now the numbers with one decimal shown in the table based on the scale of millions. In a similar way, like we saw this for the chart, we can also open up the context menu for the table and use additional capabilities such as linked analysis or show and hide elements from the table or adding, for example, a threshold. And we also have the ability to use a right click, 
which is context aware. So we selected an item so we can choose to filter or exclude. Again, add additional table functions. The menu on the right click will change depending on where you actually click in the table. As an example, if we click on the header, we're also given the ability to add charts like an in-cell chart into the table and we can apply sorting. In addition to the chart and the table, what we would like to see is also a map. If you remember from the first part, we did configure our location using longitude and latitude. So we should be able to create a map. So here we added an empty map so far. And as you can see, we have the builder panel on the right. We choose the option to add a layer and we choose the bubble layer. The data is already selected as we using this model. And we have our location dimension as we configured it. So now the data actually focuses the map, in this case on the US, and we can choose a measure for the bubble size. In this case, we use the revenue. We can have a second measure for the bubble color. And in this case, we use the cost of goods. So we can see the revenue as well as the cost combined into the map. We could do some configuration for on the color. In this case, we can choose the number of ranges. We can choose percentages or absolute values. We can also choose a different color so that it's more obvious that kind of we can have the cost goes up. We'll choose a scheme that goes from green to red and we're just going to flip it. So green means basically low cost and red means high cost. As part of the map, we can also change the actual base layer. So we confirm our configuration first, and there you can see we have different base map layers available as part of the S3 integration. And we can choose now which of those base layers we would like to use. I'm just going to show quickly some examples when we switch how it's going to look for the different base layers. So here, for example, the dark one, or for example, the transparent one. So one of the elements I would like to show as well is we have a chart, a table, and a map. So what if we want to give the end user the ability to choose between different, for example, product areas? So in this case, we can add an input control. We ask which dimension we would like to use. So in this case, it's the product categories. Which filter values we want to offer? Do we want to allow a single or a multi-select? And that's all that we really have to configure. So we resize it. And now the end user will have the ability to simply choose between the different dimension members and fill the data in a very, very simple way. The filter is on the second page, so the table and chart are not actually leveraging the value. It's focused only for the map in the given example. So this concludes our session on how you can build a quick story, a chart, and a map. But I want to say thank you for watching.